I was so fascinated when Dr. Michael Greger shared the specific beverages he consumes every day, because I have to admit, I wasn't expecting him to say what he did. Since the release of his new book, How Not to Age, it feels like autophagy has gained more and more attention. Autophagy is a natural process by which a cell breaks down damaged, old or dysfunctional components within a cell, and then repurposes those components to build or maintain cells. This is critically important, as those components can take up a lot of room in a cell and prevent it from working properly. These scientists speculate that polyphenols contained in coffee promote health by stimulating autophagy. I have to admit, I want to decrease my caffeine consumption, so I thought I may miss out on the autophagy benefits of coffee. However, the researchers found that regular coffee and decaffeinated coffee induces autophagy in vivo. So now let's hear from Dr. Greger of NutritionFacts.org on what he drinks every day. Well, so three cups of coffee associated with 13% lower risk of all-cause mortality. Three cups of tea every day associated with 24% reduced risk of all-cause mortality, but even better through a different mechanism. So presumably there'll be an additive effect. So that's why I start my days with three cups of coffee, switch over to three cups of tea before moving to herbal tea in the evening. Green tea is slight edge over black. Both are good. I have a whole chapter in the autophagy chapter talking about the benefits of coffee um, in terms of anti-aging, in terms of boosting this kind of housekeeping process within the body. Previously, you know, in How Not to Die, for example, in my, in my chapters on liver disease, depression, and Parkinson's, I talk about how, you know, the benefits of coffee for the liver, mind, and brain. In addition to anti-aging, coffee drinkers tend to live longer. Um, you know, three cups of coffee a day is associated with about 13% lower risk of premature mortality. Same with uh, decaf. And filtered is best, paper filtered. Those that drink paper filtered coffee live even longer um, than those who don't. And they both live longer than those who don't drink coffee at all. If it's not for everyone, coffee can worsen acid reflux disease, if bone loss, glaucoma. So if you have a strong family history of glaucoma, which is excessive kind of pressure within the eyeball or degeneration of the optic nerve, coffee may not be a great choice. But otherwise, coffee is a healthy beverage, though every cup of coffee is a lost opportunity to drink something even healthier, which is a cup of green tea. Coffee associated with 13% lower risk of uh, premature death. Green tea consumption is like 26% lower, so twice the benefit. You only got one mouth. You could argue that you should not drink coffee because you could be instead be drinking green tea. So I usually start on my day with coffee, switch over to black tea, which actually has a different set of phytonutrients um, because of the processing. Then I switch over to green tea, and then I switch over to herbal tea um, uh, later in the day. Hibiscus, I'm a big chamomile fan. Yeah, I actually take bags of chamomile with me. In my suitcase, you always find it. I find it's a really nice way to kind of um, unwind. You know, when I give a talk, I'm just so adrenalinized. I'm just so, the you know, I'm just, I feed off of so much of that energy from the audience, and it's kind of hard for me to go to sleep, even though I'm exhausted after, you know, a long day of travel, and it, you know, three hour book signing line or whatever, that chamomile really is, is like my, is the signal to my brain that, okay, it's time to start shutting down. Let's get some sleep. Dr. Gregor changed what he ate and drank every day because of all the research he did for his book, How Not to Age. So next, learn the six new foods he added to his diet. 